I've noticed that uh, birds are part of your practice. Birds, I think birds are the coolest thing. Really, really highly cool thing. I mean, there is something of what, you know, like I see a bird and for some reason like that Zen word suchness mm -hmm. comes to mind because they just are what they are. And they're unmistakably so. Yeah, and, and, and the, to me they're fascinating from an engineering scientific design standpoint. Mm. I mean, that they can do what they can do. I watched them flying in, landing on the feeder, and the way they come down so nonchalantly and come in and land something possibly difficult, stop, do their task, and flush and fly away in such a, uh, an elegant and thoughtless way, a not yeah. thinking way. There's yeah. no pondering. You never see them complaining or whining. There's no sort of bird sitting off to the side saying, oh, how come I can't get to the feeder now? You know, how come there? Oh, like, there he goes again. There he goes again. He's yeah, I've been waiting here all afternoon. <laughs> why, why oh, is he like the I had my eye on that sunflower seed. That's right, exactly. <laughs> you never see that. I mean, the, the birds never sit around and complain. They just do their thing. They're, they're constantly present. They do a magnificent physiological thing and are always present. They're not any place except right now doing what they're doing. But Gary, the planning ego is necessary for any truly kind of complicated <laughs> Enterprise. I mean, an interesting experiment would be as if you could somehow, you know, using, say, magnetic stimulation, mm. induce, like, uh, activity in the uh, default node network right. of birds at a distance and then watch as the yeah. chaos ensues. Oh, oh, now, first of all, they'd be spl they'd just be flying into the... Uh, that's right. They wouldn't be paying any attention. Right. They'd be looking at their phones. Right? Crashing into the walls. Right, they would be arguing over the interpretation of like uh, different stories. That's right, exactly. Uh, yeah, they'd probably form sports teams. They'd probably form sports teams. <laughs> different colors of hats. They have red oh, hats, they've got hats. They, they do have the different they color different hats and so hats. forth. But it is true. I mean, like that. That you know, we often talk about the way in which everything can be a teacher. Yeah. Uh, but I think we overlook the way in which simply observing the way in which different parts of nature. Yeah. manifest. Yeah. It's extraordinary teaching about the nature of reality. Mm -hmm. Not just the nature of birds, mm -hmm. but this idea that we have in our heads that somehow there needs to be somebody there who's in charge and knows what's going on yeah. in order to do anything impressive. And you watch them and there's nobody in charge there. There is no little bird head inside doing a big egoic structure discussion. It doesn't happen. And yet they fantastically uh, capable in their environment. But in the spring, they, they get together and they argue with each other about the best design for a nest, right? They, <laughs> you know, like, they, I, I haven't seen them, but I'm imagining that they have little blueprints, you know, <laughs> they, and they go, okay, all right, uh, you know, you, you carry the twigs. Over. I mean, because you couldn't possibly build anything without a plan, right? You've got to have a plan. But the amazing thing is genetically, they build these most, they've never seen one. They were in one, they came out of it, they have babies, they come back, they start building the same nest mom made. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't see mom build it, but mm -hmm. they can build one. Yeah, but well, we're totally different, different than from that, Gary. <laughs> no, but we, we, <laughs> they put these elegant structures for their raise their babies, and yet their babies have never seen one built. And their babies come back and build the same thing themselves. But, but it feels like human beings actually have these very similar kind of epigenetic structures mm. where we actually build our lives, not so many nests. Like we can't... We don't build homes based on the homes that uh, no, we grew exactly. up in, but we build our lives with the same kind of unconscious structures mm -hmm. that our parents had, mm -hmm. and we do it with the same level of alacrity and precision, mm -hmm. you know, that they do with their nests. You know, like I have a habit of, you know, if I have a napkin, mm -hmm. I crumple it up in my hand and I'm just holding it mm -hmm. for a really long time. And then anytime I hang out with my dad, I look at my dad and he's got a, he's got a, a napkin exactly. crumpled up in his hand. Exactly. Or the way I walk or, yeah. you know, yeah. all these things. So if we reflect on our own behavior, it actually most of what we're doing is closer to that automatic construction oh, yeah. oh. of nests yeah. than we're aware. But we just have this internal narrative going on that tells us that we're in control. It's like, well, I decided to crumple up that... Uh, uh, napkin in my hand. You know, it's just it's useful. I might need it. You know, what I mean? like, <laughs> not that I'm just yeah. an unfolding of another nest building yeah. doyle. You know, of the uh, like my father and my mother. Yeah, but I, a recent blog post on that current neuroscience. You know, we're almost totally non-consciously operating. Phew. Well, and, 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 and you watch the narrative. <laughs> yeah. We've talked. But watch the narrative, 
And the narrative is like a parallel universe. I mean, the body's doing fantastically complicated things. This is astonishingly complicated. Yeah. And yet it goes on with alacrity, with yeah. great ease and, and beauty. And yet we're up here talking about, well, I saw that movie last night. I came to Marsh and said, well, I've got to have this just for dinner. This has nothing I couldn't to, believe she said that. It has nothing to do <laughs> with what's going on in your world. Nothing. It's a whole parallel dysfunctional universe, a dystopia up there. In so far as it involves us. Yeah, exactly. But then the beautiful thing is to loop around what birds don't seem to have. Birds don't have. Is that when the... Uh, self-referential part whether it's when it's no longer about why did she say that or mm -hmm. what, what what am I going to do about this mm -hmm. or what if this happens and mm -hmm. I still can't believe how unfair that was in right. the past and the ideas just flow mm -hmm. then you have this unbelievable cascade of the imagination that's just mm -hmm. going on at all times that you don't identify with any more than you identify with the bird mm -hmm. at the window but it's as beautiful as watching the birds. You watch this waterfall of thoughts that are going, and you thought, what is that? What is that about? And the imagination has this attribute of the infinite. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if we could, you know, let ourselves be a little bit like the birds, you know, not only by observing them, uh -huh. then we would observe what is about us that's so beautiful. You know, what kind of nests are we building that are so remarkable that we're doing without knowing it? Well, and, and the enormous creativity that our species has, is capable of. Yeah. If they can get this narrative out of the way, if they can stop this dystopic vision going on up here and let the really magnificent part of this mag huge process, the elephant processor, function without encumbrance and let this creativity and this spontaneity emerge, unbelievably magnificent thing can happen. Or they cannot happen if you overwhelm it with this, this topic, blah, 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 going on all the time. No, because I get this a lot from people. They say, well, look, you know, that's all well and good. You know, sometimes we get comments on the videos, too. It's like, but what about knowledge workers, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, and people say, but I make my living off of ideas. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, all the more reason. <laughs> exactly. I, like, imagine you're saying that to the birds. Like, but I make my living off of uh, building nests. It's like, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. All the more reason why you should just let the nest manifest. Mm -hmm. Let the ideas manifest. Right. The more you think that it's you doing the doing, the less interesting the ideas are and the less frequently they manifest. Exactly. And the less functional you become.